Hey Internet, it's Jesse here at Ish Guitars. This is a very exciting day. This is the release day of the Spectre Ethos bass and the Spectre Dimension bass. You might notice that that one has funny sideways frets, and this one has a crazy cool finish. Mm -hmm. uh, both crazy of these, finish. I mean, yeah, also crazy yeah. finish, let's be honest. Uh, both of these are very, very, very exciting new releases from Spectre. Probably my most exciting, most stoked about release they've had yeah. for a long time. Um, this is really cool. Spectre is under Korg's ownership now. You probably already know that. And they're trying to do some really cool freaking basses. Mm -hmm. They're finally starting to get into their own production. They've owned Spectre for a couple years, and they're getting to those neat things they've been talking about now. Um, and these are the two first ones. So this bass we're going to talk about in a separate video. We're going to drop a link below so that you can see that. Um, but in this video, we're going to do an in-depth review of the Ethos, this bass right here. Um, and uh, yeah, so here we go. You're going to hear a couple different parts, the good, the bad, the things that I kind of just want more. And of course, we're going to do a playing demo uh, at the end as well with every playing position. Beautiful. Are you ready, Jay? I'm always ready. Are you ready, Internet? Silence, yeah. They, they're know. clapping. They're I, clapping. I, I'm assuming so. All right, so first we're going to talk about the price point because that's the most important part of this base. What you get for the price. It's the value. This is a value And base. I love saving some money on my instruments. You are the value master, Jay. I love it. So this is $17.99 for a four-string and $18.99 for a five-string, although it's facing the wrong direction right now. Yeah, it's coming. You'll see it in a second. Um, comes in two colors, uh, Interstellar and super faded black. So right off the bat, what's cool about this is these are USA Spectre colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are bases that are like, you know, four or five grand plus six, seven, right. eight thousand dollar bases. Um, that's where you get these cool uh, colors from. So essentially what this line is doing is it's trying to bring those USA options and features into a Korean built base that's a very accessible price point. So it's right. a pro base. You can tour with it. You can do whatever. You can be in the studio. Like, this is a really yeah. freaking good base. Exactly. With USA options, but for a way more sensible price point because yeah. $6,000 is a lot of freaking money. Yeah. Right? It, and it still feels like and a rock. It feels great. This is. So to transition to that, um, this is phenomenal quality instrument. I, I have to say, of Korean built instruments, um, probably one of the best yeah, I've ever a, felt. Yeah, that's a winner. Yeah. Um, the epic wins in Korean built instruments um, are PRS, well, they're now in Indonesia. Um, Dingwall, yep. of course, they're in China now. Um, and uh, uh, Spectre has been in Korea for a very long time. But uh, I know people, those names always put people off, right? Right. But these guys have been building Spectre bases for since the 80s, right? So it's been 40 years of them building Spectres. It's really cool. They really know what they're doing. Yeah. It's, been, <laughs> it's, it's 40 years, it's 40 years. And this is definitely the peak of that 40 years of experience is this bass. Um, the, the finish feels great. The, I mean, just everything about it. The back is beautiful. Uh, yeah, the back, the back is, is gorgeous. Beautiful. The, the, all of the, um, the glue lines, all of the, I mean, the, just around the nut, all those little things. You know, we sell like literally $20,000 guitars yeah. here kind of all the time. Yeah. And so we get to see everything under the sun. And I mean, even just like the finishing around the nut, for example, on a Gibson, brand new Gibson, you'll have finish that's over the edge of it and all screwed up and stuff like that. This is perfectly cut. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. Um, so there's all these little signs. If you really sit and look at this base, of just very, very well finished, detailed details. Details, <laughs> yes. Um, it's a nice build. It's a very high quality build. Um, so I know people are going to be upset about, oh, it's 1899. It's Korean. This is where we are in the world. This is where we are in inflation. Mm -hmm. You know, 20 years ago, yeah, this would have been like a thousand bucks. But that was 20 years ago when inflation was at a thousand bucks. Right. Well, for what you're getting, like. It's one of those things where you pick it up and you know it's right when it like when you hold it. It feels really good. It's, it's it feels not, really good. It's like hard to argue against so, it. So, speaking of this, we're going to talk about the dope stuff. For those of you who are over the age of sixty, dope means awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the really dope stuff on this base. Um, one of my favorite things is lumen lay side dots. Yep. It glows like come yeah. on. Yeah. Glow glows. in the dark. We all love it. I know. Like exactly. that's easy. Coolest thing ever. 
Um, we're just working this into some USA builds of ours and stuff like that. So they kind of beat us to it here. But not um, on the front though. Not on the front. So this is mother pearl on the front, lumen lay on the sides. Yeah. Awesome. That's the best. Um, also, super, super dope. I found this really cool. This base is actually a poplar burl top, and this has a maple body. So if you're a Spectre traditionalist, the original Spectres that blew people's minds, that really Spectre got known for, were NS2s, neck through, um, with the curvy body, with the contour on the back, um, and they had solid maple body wings and three-piece rock maple necks that went all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, usually they had paw ferro boards or something like that, or ebony board or whatever. Um, so it's really cool they actually use maple as the body wood on these. A lot of times you don't see bases made out of maple, guitars in general too, with their body with a maple top but not a maple back. Right. It was a great tone wood, and it, it's really integral to the specter tone and sound. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something that they kind of stumbled upon that nobody else for some reason really figured out. Um, also, this poplar burl top is not a veneer. This is not a veneer. Let me say again, it's not a veneer. Not a veneer. Not yeah. A veneer. So on a cheaper Korean base, right, or Chinese base or something, you're just gonna have this little tiny sliver that's the size of a, right. you know, literally width of like a human hair, right, that's on the top. This is not that. This is half of the body is poplar burl. This is how we do it on a USA base. When we have a top and a back, they're thick. This top probably starts off about an inch and a half thick because they have to carve it out. It's really thick. This is a big old slab of poplar. This is no cost cutting whatsoever. This is an, a, a ball to the wall, all out base build that happens to be in Korea. Um, it's really pretty fantastic. Um, from there, uh, we also have dope stuff. Aguilar Electronics and uh, pickups and electronics. You may have just heard Korg also bought Aguilar as of a couple oh, days ago. That's correct. I forgot about that. Which is super exciting. Some people are worried about it. I'm not because Korg has done a wonderful job with yeah. Spectre. I'm a really big fan yeah. of these guys. Hey guys. Um, and they've just been crushing it. They've been doing a great job and they're really, um, they have a lot of passion for the brands that they have to keep those brands as those brands. They're not trying to turn them into something else. So it's really cool to have Aguilar on board. And so I think this is also partially kind of, you know. Oh, yeah. They knew they were going to be buying Aguilar. So there's Aguilar stuff in here. Um, but Aguilar is an industry leader, right? They blew up in the 2000s, really, especially. And there's a reason why they're the, the, the leader. This sounds awesome. This bass sounds really, yeah. really good. You're going to hear in a minute. I was genuinely surprised. At first, when I first felt the bass, I was kind of like, yeah, okay, you know, cool, you know, whatever. And I plugged it in. Yeah, you like, got to plug it in. Oh! Exactly. We'll get to that in a second. Um, let's see. Anything else specifically super dope? I don't think so. Um, oh, cool inlay at the 12th fret. Super, super cool. Yeah. I like it's everything that. that we love on Spectre stuff. Okay, so not so dope. Uh, now, this is completely unbiased, by the way. I have not said any of this to Spectre or the guys at Korg yet. So, You hey. guys get to hear first, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now you know. Um, if you all are watching at Spectre, here's what I think about this. It's a really cool base. Um, Korean finishes, for some reason, when I touch them, after you touch a ton of instruments, you can tell that they're Korean finish, just the gloss coat. I don't exactly know why, but the Korean finishes tend to be maybe a tiny bit stickier. A almost tiny a little, bit. Just like tacky. Just tiny, a touch tiny of tackiness bit. almost. You can just tell. Yeah. It's just different. I don't know what it is. So when I touch this, immediately, as someone who's really experienced with a ton of instruments, because we touch a lot of instruments around here, mm -hmm. it sounds so creepy, um, it just kind of feels Korean at first touch, which isn't the worst thing, because yeah. it is, right? But it's not so dope, it right? It's not super um, A little annoying thing that's not so dope is with this 12th fret inlay. Um, it's not really like fully buffed out. So when you look at it closely, when you look at it from this far away, it looks great. But when you look at it kind of closely, mm -hmm. it's a little bit cloudy. Whatever. Again, not that big a deal. I, that's something I, I need. I don't want it to be like shiny. I, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Um, the thing I really hate. I'm with you on this one. I am with you on this one. I really hate about this bass. And some of you will disagree, but I hate is that it has volume, volume controls. Why? So when you have to turn your volume off, you have to turn two knobs off. Yeah, so here's the thing. So you're like, oh cool, I'll turn my volume down a little bit because the sound guy 
Right. Right. Oh, well, now my mix is wrong. Now the bass sounds totally different. Okay, well, hey, yeah. we're, we're in rehearsal, and I just want to go to zero so I can let go of my bass and let the strings ring or whatever. Oh, wait, okay, now I have to turn both off and ruin my mix that I had in the first place. It's just like... It's, it's a small thing, but it's an annoying thing. Oh, it annoys yeah, the crap yeah, yeah. out of me. I'm it's 2021. You. Let's have a blend knob on blend every bass ever. Blend, master volume. We already have active yeah. electronics. It's easy to throw a blend in there. Why not? I spec everything with a blend um, if I can. Yep. Um, so that super annoys me. Um, the other thing that's kind of weird about it is, although I love Aguilar electronics, they have way too much. Super highs. Yeah, they just have so yeah. many decibels of of adjustment that it's like too much. You almost want to. You don't have fine. to use it all, right? But yeah. for example, so here's the bass, right? Here's treble, ready? Whoa, like crazy. No, that's, it's not bad to have it, but it's hard when there's that big of a gap. It's between, not bad to have it, but it makes the, the control a little bit more sensitive. It's hard to find your special So this spot. is kind of about Aguilar. This isn't quite as much about the bass, but there's a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last thing I would really, I would really mention about this bass that I'm like, eh, it's not so dope, is these tuners. Now they are really good tuners. These are the tuners that they use on the less expensive Korean basses that they make, the $800 Legends yep. and stuff like that. The problem is that they're the same tuners that they use on the $800 yeah. Legends, and this is a $1,000 more bass. Even if they just put a logo on there, I would be happy. They are good tuners, but I just, it's just one of those things that when I pick it up initially, I kind of just go. Okay, it's a Korean bass. You know, like it's not that different. And right. it's completely psychological. I know that because I know these tuners. We've sold these basses for 10 years and we know that they're great Functionally, tuners. Functionally, they work amazingly. They fu yeah. Functionally, they're fantastic. But it's just, I just want them to a be little different. Pizzazz, I a just little pizzazz, a little. I just want to feel a little special that I paid $17.99 for this like pretty expensive bass that I'm not getting the same tuners as are coming on. Right sub thousand dollar legends because it's a lot more money it's a lot more expensive of a base especially if you had if you had a legend before right like, like this i feel back. like this should feel like a level up yeah exactly and so it does when you when you put it in your hands and you play this thing you're like whoo this is yep. a level up yeah if you blindfolded someone and played this thing you'd be like holy crap yeah but then like when i first picked it up and looked at it having had a lot of these bases i kind of was just like okay it, it's it's dope you know it, it's cool it's korean you know whatever but like I said, after I played it and started messing with it, oh my God, because it plays great and it mm -hmm. sounds great. So without further ado, let's get the playing going. So here's how playing is going to go on this guy. We've got our dark glass stack, which is DI'd. It's totally flat. Um, we've got our tone controls here, which are totally flat. They're right. centered. And we're going to start off with both pickups in your typical kind of configuration. I am slap happy, so I'm going to start slapping for you and we'll also do some finger style stuff i'm um, even gonna pull out a pick for you weirdos that play with oh, the pick. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and guitarists too you losers all right here we go i like that it's a great bass this is flat we haven't touched anything yet so let's hear the neck pickup, which I really thoroughly enjoy. Uh, the P bass pickup. Super fat. Super clear. Warm, super punchy. Clear. It's like a great P bass tone. Yeah. There's one of the keys to these specters is that they get you with that P bass tone, which let's be honest is the best sounding bass on earth. Okay, and here's the treble, the jazz pickup. There you go. <clears throat> it's crazy because even though that's pretty bright, like I'm sitting right in front of it, it's not like ice picking or anything. It's not popping my eardrum out. I agree with you. That's it's a like, good point. It's almost like got that bell-like quality, like where it's... Hey, people say this, Jay doesn't know this, what? that Spectres have a piano-like tone. Oh, yeah, I don't know that. This totally nails that sound. Um, traditionally, you'll have EMGs in a Spectre, right? Um, I think that the Aguilars lend themselves really well to the Spectre tone profile mm -hmm. because they're warm, they're fat, they're poignant. Um, so yeah, that's where you get that piano-like kind of you know, clear bell-like quality. It still has got some substance. Bell-like like, is a great way to say it, but yeah. yeah, it still has a lot of substance. If you're, you know, have a grand piano, you have the opportunity to just 
whack your finger on any any key, it's just like, whoa, right. it sounds like someone's ringing a bell that's a big old string. Yeah. Great sounding bass. Both pickups. Go to the neck pickup. Oh, that P bass tone. I'm a it's believer. It's hard to like go, turn it off, isn't it? It really is. Okay, so on the bridge pickup or the jazz pickup, I'm going to show you two things. Pay attention while I'm playing. I'm going to play up uh, at your typical anchoring position on the uh, P pickup up here, but then I'm also going to move back and play above the jazz pickup, which will give you an entirely different tone, yeah. which I think is important to show you. So great sounding bass in that uh, jazz position playing over that jazz mm -hmm. pickup. Like, oh, that gives you, it seems to give you a lot of that touch control, which mm -hmm. we love because we don't want to be fiddling and messing and really going through too much stuff if we can play right here. Right. So that whole tone in your right hand thing. This bass has it. Right. And not, a lot, not a ton of basses have it. Less than you think. You really only find that in high, high, high end stuff. So, I mean, truly, here's the thing. This will be my official outro. I think they nailed it with this bass. If you play it, it sounds, it feels, the, the action is perfect. The playability is perfect. The, the controls, meh. But the tone of it, oh my god. It plays and sounds so good. This is Spectre for days. You will not be disappointed. This sucker is incredible. For the price point, oh. I think you're really, I don't know what else you'd buy in Baseland right now that has these crazy cool finishes, Lumen Light, all this incredible stuff with incredibly high quality yep. for $17.99. hundred bucks more, you get a five string. Yeah, this, they did a great job. This is don't good. Don't forget us weirdos. I would, I would own one. Oh! Pick people. Here's just the neck. And with the bridge. Now you've heard slapping, you've heard fingerstyle, and you've heard picking. Um, it all sounds great. It all plays great. This bass is really good. Yep, it delivers. It delivers. There's nothing you have to do to it to make it better. All these people with Korean stuff that say, oh, well, you've got to do this and that. You don't have to do anything. I'm just weird and I want different tuners because it's You're so expensive. particular. I know, You're I'm so just particular. Picky. Um, So... Buy one of these. They're we gonna, have they're gonna on go. release day uh, the only ones that are going to be available here, and they're going to sell quick. And so you should get one. If you don't own one, you should totally buy one. And you should buy from us because we're awesome. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe this, uh, share it, post it on the forums with all your buddies so you can all argue about if this is actually good exactly. or not. Exactly. And feel free to also let us know in the comments below uh, what you think about this uh, pretty lady. Ooh, with a brass nut. I didn't even mention that. Anyway, from all of us here to all of us to you on the internet, goodbye. <laughs>